Daryl and Jesse are making steady progress on the Panzer One restoration project. We have a lot of original components to work with, but unfortunately, we're going to have to make a lot of the running gear ourselves. This week, Daryl shows off his incredible engineering work as he fabricates the final drive housing, and Jesse shows off some of his restoration work for the return rollers. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. It may not look like much has happened since the last episode, but the boys have been hard at it. It's not just the fabricating that's been taking so much time. It's been designing so many different components from scratch. I have to say, Daryl did pretty all right for a carpenter. This is our front hubs, our drive sprockets, and it's taken a bit to work out, but we're finally there, we think, it's gonna work. What we're gonna show you today is how it all goes together. And, uh, and we'll probably do a test fit on, on the vehicle just to, to see how it all goes. This is kind of design and construct. It's uh, had a look at a lot of photos. The only thing we had a, a rough plan on was this, this shape here. And we know what the track centres were on the vehicle. So from the track centres, we've tried to make it work so our sprocket will be exactly the same. We want to get these front sprockets on because that'll set the, the proper width of this actual vehicle. If we're out two or three mil, we can adjust everything as we go backwards. First, start with the basic measurements. We had this shape here, and we knew the center of sprocket center of the vehicle. And from that, then we had to work out what we could find basically off the shelf that would help us. So I went and got a concentric circle. This is, this is like a uh, reducer between, say, a five inch pipe and an eight inch pipe. If we want to spend hours and hours on the lathe turning a big chunk of metal to look like a cone, it, it's just not cost effective. So we've got to look around for something that will uh, do the job and look the same. From that, I got on the CAD drawings, started with those basic measurements. We're going to use a, a three bearing system because it's got a lot of uh, pull to the side, tension on the side because it's driving a chain. So we've got two standard bearings towards the front of the hub. And then in against the wall, we've got a uh, roller tapered bearing because that way we can tension it up a bit more using this roller bearing. I'm not very good at cutting threads yet, so working on it. So instead of ruining a big piece, I've got Glenn next door to just cut these threads. And then we had to use an outside uh, company to, to do these keyways for us. What are they for? These will come into play later on. This one's for a lock washer. This one's to actually hold our drive, an inner drive sprocket that has a chain. We're using a chain drive on this. So that's what that keyway is for. That'll, you'll see that further on in the build. And then I had to get Jess to do the welding here. We, same thing, we had, to, we had to work out a way that this sprocket could join onto this shaft. To do that, we had a keyway cut in and a keyway cut into this flange. We put them together and Jess has welded them around and we've just turned them off to to make everything true and centered. Step one is, is I just want to put a bit of oil on this shaft, all right, because we're going to have to drop two bearings and a seal through it. All right. So I've already got a bearing uh, already in in here. I tapped in earlier. Yep. Now what we have to do now is put in a spacer ring. This is the space between the two bearings and they, it runs on the inner race of the bearing. And he'll just go in, put the oil on this bearing. Right. Just position in there. Just uh, I'll put the seal in and just gently tap the seal in place. So I'm a bit worried whether the heat might do something to this seal, but when we finish with it, we'll pull it apart and have a good look. We just need to put it together to actually weld. We have to have the shaft in it to weld it all together. So that's in there, that seal's there. So what I'll do now is I'll just put a bit more oil in here. I'm just going to turn this over 
and hopefully it'll go on our shaft nice and easy. How's that weight wise you're off? Yeah. So that should all turn, it's a bit firm. All right, so that turns on there, we've got our seal in there. That's down tight, yeah, there's a three mil gap here between the two, so that's that part done. So as you can see, it's probably just got another half mil to be tapped in, but when we tighten up the bearing, the final bearing, that should all pull in nice and tight. I'll give it another tap. Just to All right, got to remember to do everything in sequence because you don't want to pull it apart again. So what I do now is I put this outer housing on. Drops in there. Now we're going to want, once again, we've got a spacer between the roller taper bearing and this housing, this, the, the body of the housing. So he'll go in there. I'm calling this the inner housing, that's the outer housing. So that'll go in on top there. Right, yeah. So all we've got left now is to put this roller bearing, this roller taper bearing on. So I'm just going to put a bit more oil in this. A real man's hammer. <laughs> hold, hold on, she's going on nicely. Right. So, the tapered roller bearings in there now. We'll take this out and grease it up before we use, actually use it for driving, but just for our test fit, that's gone in okay. Everything seems to be turning all right. So the way we lock in this uh, taper roller here is with this flange. We've, just, we've decided we're going to actually put a uh, grease nipple in here. I just haven't done it yet. That's one of the other things we'll do you know, before the, the, the final fitting off it. We'll put a grease nipple in here so we can keep that greased. That goes on there. And then last of all, we've got a lock ring here to stop it all moving out. At this stage, this could basically all just lift off. But these lock rings, we'll have a double lock ring with a, with a, a washer, lock ring washer. Very fine thread, so you've got to be careful putting them on. And the other thing with this is we, get, we can tension that bearing up again, put a bit more pressure on that, that bearing. So what we're going to hit, do now is we'll have to get Jess, who'll step in there, and he'll work his magic. He's going to put a couple of tacks around here and under here and then this will all become one unit then it'll be all welded together he'll flip it over and drop it onto this plate here this, that's uh, about all i can do it's up to jess now Should we just lean it yep. in like that? Yep. And then I'll grab the top. Yep. Let me get my hand out. You got yep. the, the get your hand out. Yep. Send it on there pretty good. Yep.
cleaning out the little bolt holes, the boys were kind enough to give us a little preview of how this unit will finally look. Just watch that as it comes out of the hole. Can you push me a bit? Yep. Yep. Right That's sitting on that edge there. So we've got to tilt it that way. You spin around, you go through. I got my knee there. Yep, right there. Oh, no, I got my fingies in. We're in. Hold on. Can it go around? Let me just get nut. Hold on. Which way do you want to go? Yeah. Okay, can we just get one on the bottom here? Yep. One on the bottom. Put a nut on the bottom. Yep. You know it's safe then. You know it, just hold it. Beautiful. Oh yeah. I'll get a uh, spanner. Yeah, we'll just, I'll, I'll just do it hand tight because we're going to take it off again. It's, the weight's going to hold there, it's not going to go anywhere. So. Wow. <laughs> and it, it turns. It turns. There is a god. This old sprocket and hub needs a lot of tidying up, but Daz was keen to fit it temporarily just to see how his measurements and calculations were. Oh, that's sharp. Yep. What's it supposed to be? About 180. 687 so I'm out a bit but I know where I can fix I can take up a bit in the uh, when we pull it apart again I can take a little bit more off the hub here probably about 8 mil off about 8 mil off how much clearance is there in the in the track oh tracks tracks got heaps of clearance so but we still want it yeah. to come out otherwise everything's going to be pushed right out gotcha because this is your center correct. yeah yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So we okay. can have it out slightly, but... Oh, I'm off there a bit, so... If I'm off there a bit... Yeah, it's about six or seven mil, so... But I, I can shim a bit more up here. Yeah. Take the driver's arm. <laughs> Just about. Wow, it looks pretty schmick. Is there a hub cap that goes on? Yeah, the there end? is a hub cap that goes on to protect all that, yeah. Well, it didn't fall. That's a good sign. Right in like that. Yeah. So that's how, that's how it grabs on, so huh? So there is a little bit of play. Yeah. We have got play. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you want the road yeah. wheels to yeah. be pretty we, much spot we, on. we want everything to be closer, because what will happen if this is out too far, it means we have to shim everything off the hull. Yeah. What, so, well, if you have a look here, I'll, I'll, there's about three or four mil here too. Look, that'll pull up on the inside there. We've only just, yeah. You know, just put it on temporary. Put it on temporary, so. Yeah, so that goes like that. Hydress, start her up. <laughs> it, it's, it's just, we've only put the minimal heat in yet. Yeah, once Jess fully welds everything. It will shrink slightly. Yeah, so. So. Still, I have to be happy with that. I'm happy. And it spins true. It turns out after tightening a few bolts, the sprocket was only about one or two millimetres out and just about as perfect as we could get it after all. While Daz was puzzling out this engineering marvel, Jess was setting about restoring the track return rollers. Here, Jess. So about two weeks ago, I started pulling apart our return rollers. These are the original ones uh, that we had. So we have one fully original one, but this one here, I haven't, haven't had to do any work to it. Pretty much was just pulling it apart. In good condition? Really good condition, really good condition. Not bent or twisted or anything. So just literally pulled it apart um, and then just fixed the thread up. The thread was a little bit seized. Okay. Uh, then the other ones we had were modified by farmers. So this one here, was bent and broken a bit. So what we've done is we've cut cut it off, cut the top of the, the shaft off, and we've turned a brand new shaft and threaded it and welded that in place. And then these two here, these two here, were modified by a farmer and they cut the base off and they kept the top. So this here went down and there was just a bit of flat plate with some holes in it. 
So what I've done is I've just cut them off and we've kept the original shaft and without turning a, a piece out of something solid, like Daryl said before, we've um, found our local supplier, they've got like pipe reducers, which is a pretty close shape. So we've bought a few of these. Oh yeah. So this was a spare one. So that just pretty much goes on there and then we turn the shaft so it feeds onto here and centers and goes in. So these are the ones that we've had to make all in house pretty much from, from scratch. So that's these cones, these reducers. And what we've done is we've turned a shaft and we've uh, AutoCAD drew a plate that's got a hole in it so it centers. So the shaft runs all the way through and centers on that. And then we've turned it all the way down for the bearings and also Glenn was nice enough to turn a thread on for us. Gee, he's a good bloke. So, so that's how they work. We've got our two bearings, then you've got your spacer in between, then you've got your inner seal, and then your outer cap. And these are all original parts? Yeah, so these are all original, but not the two bearings. So we're putting brand new bearings in that. So um, what we'll do is we'll start with uh, the, inner, the inner bearing. I've just cleaned these up, the insides, get them all ready. Clean that up. When I took it off, I just remembered which which side the the inner seal and the uh, outer cap went in. There's no clues. Not really. Um, I'll show you one of the other ones. Uh, so these are some of the other original ones. So the spacings are the same. You can see where the the bearing sits on this surface here, and see there's a little bit of a divot that's where the inner um, spacer sits in there so these are the same those spacings from this edge to there yep and that side to there so I'm assuming that they're like a universal they can go either way yeah okay but the way <laughs> that these were drilled um, I know which side the cap came out of this is one that we've also got here so this shows the condition of some of the parts we have there's not much of a surface there, really. Mm, needs a bit of cleaning up. Nice and corroded. Yep, <laughs> just how we like it. Yeah. This just taps in. So inner seal. Yep. So this is on the inside of the shaft. This little indent in here is where it's, where it's um, turned out. That goes into our seal on the uh, shaft and seals it all. Gonna knock this bearing in, make sure we know it's seated on there correctly. Spacer that goes in between. So that slides in and just sits on the inner of the bearing. Put the other bearing in. Just put a little bit of a little bit more lube on it. That's the inner seal that I was talking about before. So that's actually been welded on. That was originally how it was. I never took it off. So it was welded? Yeah, so they must have tacked them on just to hold them in place. Because all of the original ones that I've worked on, all, all four of them, um, have been welded on like that. I don't know if that was done from the factory or if maybe they did it in the field. I'm not 100% sure, but all four of them were two stitches that yay wide on either side. Wow. So that's the inner seal. That's seated into that inner seal now. See how it's all enclosed now, nice and tight. So this is just a temporary fit these apart and we're going to put some grease in them later on. Yep. So we're just showing how they're assembled for now. Kind of see how that works. Spins on there. Nice. Wow. And this is the cap. So this is the original cap and we've just put a brand new grease nipple in it. So they've drilled them and pinned them. 
What does that mean? So to, to stop them from coming loose. To stop the caps from unthreading. We'll have to do the same thing. We'll have to pin them later on. Yeah, that's essentially how they work. Very good. Normally when we've restored tanks, we have a lot more components to work with. Most of the structure and external pieces we have are original. But as for the running gear, we are extremely lucky to have even those few small parts we were able to show you. This just makes the work Daz and Jesse have done so far even more impressive, especially with hardly any info to go off. But that's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.